This is my thread slash and one of my two bikes. The other one is an old hardtail that's too small for me. Today I want to give you a rundown of the bike, give you the story behind it and after that I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Let's start from the top. Before that, just a quick disclaimer, I'm constantly switching out parts and upgrading the bike, so all this may not be relevant in the future. Let's start from the grips and move on from there. The grips that I'm using are the Raceface Gripplers. They are comfy and give me a good feel for the bike while still being cushiony enough for the bike park. Next is the brakes. These are SRAM Guide R brakes. Some people don't think they are powerful enough, but for me they have worked fine and my philosophy is still that brakes are for slowing down where the goal is to go faster. The shifter is a SRAM NX Eagle. I also really prefer SRAM's lever system over Shimano's. It's just a personal preference. The dropper post is a Bontrager line dropper seat post. I haven't given it almost any service attention during the two years that I have had the bike and it still works fine. It's not too slow on the way up and it won't crush your balls, so I'm happy with it. The handlebars are an older model of the Raceface 6C. They haven't failed me yet and they have taken some good hits. One of the most reliable parts of the bike. The stem is the knockblock stem that comes stock on all Trek bikes that uses the knockblock system. I personally don't have anything against the knockblock and kind of like it too, though I could see why some people might hate it. The frame is a 2021 slash carbon frame and it's pretty unique seeing as there is no model number, just the slash. The entire frame is made of carbon with a press fit bottom bracket, which I personally hate. This is a Shimano Pro seat. I don't know what model it is, but it's really great, so I'm happy with it. The fork on this bike is a RockShox Yari and the shock is a RockShox Reactive that both came stock on the bike. I've had my up and downs with both suspensions, but if I was better at setting up a suspension, it would probably work better. Overall, really decent suspensions, though there are better options out there. For pedals, I like to use the race face gestures when I'm practicing jumping or feel like going flat. On the clipless side, we have these embarrassing Shimano pedals that came with my hardtail when we bought it. I'm going to buy new clipless pedals, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on any single pair yet. Right now my first candidate are the Time Special 8, but if you have any better suggestions, please put them in the comments. The drivetrain consists of an NX cassette with an NX chain, there's a SRAM Eagle chain ring in the front, and the derailleur is a SRAM GX Eagle. The drivetrain is good and it would probably be even better if I made more time to regularly service it. The cranks are a pair of SRAM Truadiv Descent alloy cranks, I don't know how long they are but they have worked really good. In terms of brake rotors I have 180 on the rear and 200mm in the front. The rims are a pair of Bontrager Line 30 alloy wheels and the tires are the Michelin Wild Enduro front and the DH34 in the rear with a cush core to shield against my habit of braking rims. The reason I chose these tires are because I wanted a pair of really durable yet grippy tires because I have a history of punctures and felt that the old tires lacked grip in some situations, especially as, as I like to run a bit higher tire pressure. And that's all the parts of the bike I think except for the hubs which are some stock bone trigger line hubs. They have worked fine for me, I'm not somebody that's really into hubs. Anyway, that's all of the parts so let's move on to the story of the bike. I got this bike in late 2019, a little over a year after I got into mountain biking. I consider myself very blessed for getting it, but it wasn't this good from the beginning. We bought this bike from Espontor in Piera and paid 2800 euros for it, and with that I got a spare pair of grips and extra seat stay because the old one had some scratches on it after it had been a demo bike. The bike had almost the same parts except different tires and some other small things, but the big one was the frame. This slash was originally a half carbon design with an alloy back triangle and had a totally different paint job, which was kind of extreme, but I think I liked it. Looking back at myself riding, I was really underqualified for having that bike, but I feel very grateful for getting the chance to have such a good bike from the beginning. I rode it through the winter, after that I got back to the bike shop because the knockblock had some noises 
which turned out to just be some dirt in the headset. I left the bike there for them to send it off for painting. Now you think, so this dude wasn't happy with the bike's color so he sent it off for painting. But no, it had some pretty good paint chips behind the saddle and that was the reason it was sent off for painting. Sometime later when I was at the bike shop I asked how my bike was doing and one of the employees broke news to me that Trek had discovered a crack in the carbon down tube during the painting process. He continued saying that I was going to get a new frame and since Trek didn't have the old 2018 frame model they gave me the new 2020 full carbon version in smoke black which means that you can kind of see through the carbon frame. I got the bike back in March and rode it for some time. It got its first bike park visit in the beginning of the summer and at the end of the summer I of course started this YouTube channel so the bike's journey has been documented since. So what do I think of the bike? I know that some people have a preference to certain brands, I just want a good bike and don't really care about the logo and the head tube. So I think it's good for me, but maybe a little overkill for some other people, at least for the more mellow southern Finnish terrain. It's okay on climbs and really flat trails, on enduro trails it's great and in the bike park it's excellent too. And that was the main selling point for me, I wanted a bike that I could grow into and that I could hypothetically ride anything with. I would say it's a good bike if you want a really great enduro bike and don't mind spending a few thousand. Now keep in mind I don't have the newest version of the Slash, so I can only speak from my experience on the older model, but the updated one should be even better and Trek even makes an alloy version of it that is less expensive. That's just my quick thoughts on the bike, it's a good bike but it's maybe not the bike for you. If you want some more detailed information on some point, comment below or even better hit me up on Instagram at ulaemtabe, link in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching, please like the video and subscribe to help out the channel. Now, get off the phone, get off the computer, get out riding, I'll see you, bye.